Hilarious. Are your players delusional enough to believe they're going to be number one in the country come Monday or so? You know, that's what I'm saying. That's like the dumbest, the dumbest thing in the world that you have a poll right now. You know, when nobody's played anybody uh, after maybe one game, after two games, it's you know. I didn't watch the game, but I'm sure Colorado looked a lot better than the 20th best team in the country. So uh, I think it gives an overinflated uh, view of themselves to the top teams, and it undervalues the bottom teams, and it gives them a hell of a lot of motivation. <clears throat> so, however my players are, I don't know. Maybe. Um, Maybe we should have a, what's our NIL? What's our preseason NIL? <laughs> it's used to be a, all everybody wants to talk about. But preseason number one in NIL is probably more important than preseason number one in basketball. <clears throat> what about practice over the last two, three days? Uh, happy with? Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's. The, the, the worst the worst thing ever is getting ready for the first game of the year because you have so many unknowns. You have more unknowns than you have knowns. You're dying to see what your team looks like, what their identity could be, uh, how people, how some young players respond to um, the lights that they're going to be under now, how um, people respond to maybe their roles have changed a little bit since we have more players available to us. Uh, so the first game is always going in with a lot of unknowns and then you come out of that game with a tremendous amount of information that helps you going into game. game. You actually feel better going into game two than you do going into game one uh, and then game three more than game two. So this is the most unsure you're going to be pretty much the whole season. What do you think Paige's greatest attribute is as a player? Uh, she's bright. She um, she slows the game down so much that she sees things happen before they happen, um, and that's a trait that only the great great players have. Um, because even if she had all those physical gifts that she has to be able to do what she does, if she didn't have that part, she wouldn't be nearly as as successful as she has been. So. That's what I would say. What's your minute restriction tomorrow? Minute restriction? Um, I don't know. I'm going to play it by ear. You know, um, I, I do know that um, each game is going to get ramped up. It's just how fast do we want to ramp it up? You know? um, so practices have been good, you know, and it's a fine line, you know, when you think about it. I don't want to wear her out in practice, but she needs a lot of reps because she wants to get all the dust off. So she's put me in a bad spot right now, and I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to be fair to her and try to be an adult and think about the future <laughs> instead of just right now. So yeah, there will be, but I don't know what it is yet. You know, um, be a little more than the last game for sure. Will Caroline start again? Um, yeah, 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 for right now, yeah, unless something changes between now and then, but, yeah. Do you know, how do you, how do you keep it, everything in perspective? Like, I know, I know you're good at that with the, with the players, but like, oh, maybe you're going to be number one to start the season and you guys have everybody, you know, the, the, all the great players that you have, like, what's something that you tell them to kind of keep their heads focused like where it needs to be well um, so far this season being number one is very very fleeting right mm -hmm. so all you have to do is just kind of pay attention and you know you know uh, I should tell them the story of Caesar you know that when you think you're great there's a guy that's with you all the time whispering in your ear you know, you're not as good as you think you are. So calm down here. We haven't proved to anybody that we're the number one team in the country. So uh, I think 
I think they know that. I think there have been times, I think since they've been here, we have been number one. You know, I'm sure at some point, even though it may have been just for a little while, and they saw that it didn't last very long. So I think they'll, they'll be mature enough to, to realize what it is, you know. Um, as I said, nobody's proved anything yet at this point. Everybody else going to be available injury-wise? I mean, Yana. Yana, Yana is just starting to do workouts, individual workouts. So we're hoping that we can get her into full-fledged practice soon. Okay. So she won't play tomorrow? No. No. Everyone else except Yana. I was thinking we were walking out for the National Anthem yesterday or the other day, and I thought, hey, we're small, man, compared to, like, a lot of teams that we've had here. Or you see, and they we're small. And then I looked and I went, but if I put a uniform on Jenna and Yana, man, we look like a really, really good team. So, yeah, yeah. It'd be nice to have her back. Jenna, what are your expectations for AZ this year? She her own worst enemy at times. I mean, we saw how good she can be last year, pre-injury. Oh, I said before, she's a reluctant superstar. You know, she's a reluctant superstar. I think she has all the qualities that that star players have. You know, she's she's good at every facet of the game, and um, you know, she wants to be a great teammate. She wants to make sure that everything goes well, and. Uh, you know, I want her to be super aggressive and I want her to be a risk taker and I want her to just put it all out there and, you know, try to get 40 every minute, you know, why not? Um, so little by little it's working, you know, she's been much, much more aggressive um, at, to this point this year than, oh, that, last year she was super aggressive because she, she, she knew we didn't have age. And I just don't want her to back off of that now just because Paige is here. Can you talk about that a little bit more of when you have, right, where there's all this talk of Paige is coming back, so you want AZ to stay aggressive. How about Aaliyah and Nika and wanting them to still keep playing the way they right. kept this team playing right. last year with Paige? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, the, the, secret to, to, the secret to having a championship-type team is you have to have a lot of players playing at – the top of their game just about every night. So that means Aaliyah has to have the kind of all-American season that she had last season. It doesn't matter to Paige. You know, she got some shots the other night that she didn't get last year because of Paige. So there's going to be more opportunities for her, and I want her to take advantage of those opportunities. Um, so for Nika, you know, Nika's big uh, big contributions to the team can be as much intangible as they are tangible. Um, but now, because we have a lot more firepower on the floor, she just has to make sure that we get a great shot every time down the floor and we have good possessions every time down the floor. She finds the right people um, and just keeps getting better as a three-point shooter because there's going to be more opportunities to shoot it. Yeah. Um, I think putting Paige into the mix elevates whatever everybody did last year. It it makes them 10, 20% better this year. Ideally, would you like Paige to lead the team in scoring, or would you rather have AZ lead the team in scoring? I don't care. Or, I don't care. Yeah. It's never mattered to me. Um, you know, we, um, we tend to go game to game sometimes and let's see how the game goes. Um, there's, when we run our stuff, there's shots available for everybody. It's, are you, comfortable, are you comfortable, comfortable enough, confident enough that when the ball's in your hands, you can make a play that you want to make to get you a bucket? And one night it might be you, another night it might be you, another night it might be you. Um, 
I don't think it, I don't think it matters one way or another. You know, if Paige wanted to be, lead the team to score, she would. If she wanted to lead the country in scoring, she would. But that's not that's not where she is. City Picky wasn't much hurt on Saturday. What mm-hmm. do you want to see from her now that everything kept in the bright lights are going on? There's tougher tougher competition. <clears throat> well, you would you would hope that players like that, the harder it gets, the better they are. Because if, if you're that kind of player, the the competition should bring out even more of your stuff. Um, so I want her to play like there's an unlimited amount of mistakes that she can make. Because when you're a freshman, if I try to coach every little thing, you're not going to do anything because you're going to be afraid to make a mistake. So whether it's her or Ashlyn or Ice or um, Q, just do your thing, man. And then let me worry about it later. Because uh, the last thing we want is for you to think about, should I do this or should I do that? And that's the, the big thing with me, with my freshmen. You know, go out, play, do your thing, do what we've taught you, do what your gut instincts tell you, use your God-given talents, okay? trust in yourself, believe in yourself. Then we'll watch film tomorrow. And we'll see what the jury decides. Has Ashlyn gotten better at not wanting, not trying to make every single little thing perfect? Uh, yeah, a little bit. She she goes through cycles, you know. Uh, she competes uh, at a real high level. You know, she competes like she's she should be on a championship team. That's that's her competitive level. Um, and you know, you saw the one rebound she got the other day. Where you know it's pretty impressive. There's a lot in her tank, um, and you know it's an everyday, it's a progressive thing. Um, you know, for people that have been like this for their entire lives, you don't just shake it right away. This desire to not not be as good as you think you are or letting anybody down or being less of what you know people thought you were or you know that 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 that's something that you either born with or you carry with you and little by little you know it'll get it'll get better i don't know that her desire to be perfect will ever go away you know uh but i'm gonna certainly help her with that i mean look at me I don't care how things look. I don't care how anything is. I'm not looking for it to be perfect. (laughs) (laughs) No. No. I'll hear Tamika before I see her. So I'll know when she's I'll know when she's in the building. Uh, no. I'll I'll check in on her tomorrow probably and shoot around. I don't know know what they're doing tonight. I don't know what the team's doing tonight. Do you have like a go-to to make a story that stands out to you? Um, um, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Tamika's, she's just... Do you always think she'd be a coach? No. No. Not a, no. No chance. No chance. I mean, her people skills and her ability to, you know, probably impress recruits and, and motivate kids and, you know, try to get the best out of people and make people believe in her. I think that that's all there. So she has the makings of a, of a really, really good coach. Um, but to make a major. Play. She made you crazy. Crazy with her talent, what she could do, crazy the things that she did. Crazy in some of the places she would be on the court, which if you gave her 10 choices and only one of them was wrong, that's the one she picked. <laughs> and then end up with a steal <laughs> going the other way, you know? Um, 
We never had to worry about missed shots because Tanika got every offensive rebound. It was great to watch her and Swin beat each other up for, for uh, who's going to rebound the ball. Um, yeah, she was, she was a character, man. Non-stop, non-stop, non-stop. I mean, you got to, I don't know how many of you guys were around, but you got to put yourself on my bus or on my plane or in my locker room and you're looking at a combination of D, Tamika, Swin, Maria Conlon. We had some, uh, thank God Asia was there. Sue. Yeah. Yeah, thank God Sue and Asia were there. Bring some sense of order to to the group. It was it was pretty wild. She said the high point of her career was when you guys lost your freshman year. Because she felt that was like a launching point for the program. But it was like a very Tamika thing to say. Oh. Uh, yeah, that 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 freshman year was really I was filled with a lot of what ifs. And I think they knew just how unbelievably good we, we were before Sue got hurt and then how it ended. So I could see why she would think that. That was the high point of her her career. I'm sure the low point was 2020, uh, 2001 when we lost in the semifinals, you know, because of some of the injury things that we had. So, yeah, I think Tamika experienced pretty much every emotion there is to, to go through here in this program. They got used to seeing former players in coaching roles on, on the other side and like facing against them. Say it again? Have you gotten used to seeing former players as coaches and playing against them? Man, not, not just my players, a lot of, every time I turned around, uh, you know, the, the kid from Southern, Kate, I'm like, did you really have 18 when we played you? said, I, somehow I don't remember that. She said, well, do you remember Tina blocking my shot like six times? And that's why I went out there and started shooting threes. Uh, and, I, I, and so I told, I told her when I walked over, I said, look, either you're too young or I'm too old to coach. I said, you're either too young to coach or I'm too old to coach. I said, this is, this is not your normal situation here, you know. But it's happening more and more. You know, and you look around the colleges, how many coaches are coaching that were former players that played against us? Uh, you know, it's it's, um, it's an eye opener. It sure is. It, it is an eye opener. Um, <laughs> tell you what's the worst eye opener. Like my grandson's over there shooting him up. He's 13. Uh, he's going he's going to East Catholic next year so he'll be a freshman in East Catholic and we had a kid here on campus in October that's a freshman in high school he's probably one of the top 20 players in America and I'm thinking talking to a kid my grandson's in so what's this world coming to <laughs> you've, been, you've been around long enough to coach a, a grandchild of somebody you coached in the 80s, right? Oh, sure. Oh, sure. No, sure. Sure. Not that I'm trying to rush that on you. Sure. Just a friendly reminder. I mean, I'm coaching. I'm coaching. I'm coaching a kid of, you know, a girl we played against at Georgetown, you know, and Casey's mom, Kate. Kate, you know. Um, yeah, I mean, those people in the 80s. None of them played basketball yet. To, you know, they either all have boys or they went to different sports, you know. Um, like Megan's kids now are old enough to go, you know, her daughter's old enough to go to college. She's a lacrosse player. So it's just where they have boys, you know, they, 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 you know, she has a son who plays football at Endicott. So you're right, scenario hasn't come up yet, but when it does, 
Oh, man. Like, I don't mind coaching people's <laughs> kids, but come on. <laughs> people's grandkids. Come on. Woo. I would need a real self-contract to do that. 